Hello and welcome to our webinar on partner software, why it's time to upgrade. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Nick Erickson, your host for this webinar. Today, I'm joined by two of our product support engineers, Ashley Davis and Robert Griffith. Uh, in this role, they focus on Instron's aftermarket accessories for universal testing machines. Uh, this includes all of our static software, grips, extensometers, and pretty much everything else that can be added to the test frame. They're here to talk about partner software, the current status of the platform, what that means for labs using it, and what migration to the latest software, Blue Hill Universal, looks like. Uh, we expect the presentation should take around 45 minutes, which should leave us around 15 minutes for questions. If you do have any questions, please use the Q&A icon to submit these at any time. Uh, we'll address these at the end. Uh, I also want to mention that we are recording this webinar and that all of you will receive an email afterwards with a link to the video, and it will also be available on our website, instron.com. Uh, so with that said, I will turn things over to Ashley to get us started. Awesome. Thanks, Nick. All right. So I'm going to share my screen, and we're just going to do a quick PowerPoint presentation. All right, share. All right, again, uh, thank you for joining and welcome for coming to Partner and why it is time to upgrade. So what we're gonna be covering today, I'm gonna go into the current Partner software status, and then we'll cover some Blue Hill Universal features and any major changes from Partner. After that, um, I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague, Rob, and he's gonna do an example workflow in Blue Hill Universal. And as Nick said, at the end, we will have some time for questions that you have. So starting off, partner status. So I don't know if everybody's familiar, but partner actually uh, came out in 1996 and has been manufactured from that time until 2017. And as of next year, partner is moving into the final phase of Instron's life cycle of discontinued. And what this means is that there are going to be no updates, no additional features and enhancements, and tech support is going to be on a reasonable effort basis. And really what we mean by this is that as time goes on, people are no longer being trained on partner. It becomes harder and harder for it to find Instron individuals who are actually familiar with the software. You know, at this time, we actually only have a couple of employees who can aid with partner if you were to have any questions or problems. So <clears throat> a couple hard truths, but on top of that, Legacy windows are also discontinued. So partner currently functions on XP and seven. There are a couple of, um, of partners that do run on Windows 10, but we're pretty um, concerned with XP as it was discontinued in 2014 and with Windows 7 as it was discontinued in 2020. And really, what does this mean for you? This means, and this is pulled from Microsoft's website, that as a result, there are no new security updates, non-security hotfixes, free or paid assisted support options, or online technical content updates. And so really the crux of it is that if your PC were to crash, Microsoft is not going to provide you any support. And we're concerned about that because a couple of things could happen. If all of your procedure files and historic results are on that PC, they will be lost unless they happen to be saved elsewhere. But in addition, only versions 9.6a of partner and above can work with Windows 10. So if you're on an XP or a 7 system, you likely have a version before 9.6a. And if you need to go to Windows 10, you are unable to run that version on that Windows 10 PC. And really, we want to highlight today that your best course of action is to proactively upgrade to prevent major downtime. We don't want any significant things happening within your lab, and then you have to start this process after you're already down. You know, so we understand in Sean that transitioning away from partner to Blue Hill Universal might be a challenging process. And, you know, as we said, it's been up since 1996. Some of you might have been using it for decades. Um, and we recognize that there are a few scenarios that customers have found themselves in, and some are going to be more challenging than others when it comes from upgrading from partner to Blue Hill Universal. But ultimately, we wanna get you to the same destination. We wanna make sure that you have improved security, repeatability, reliability, and productivity. So maybe you guys can relate to one of these situations that we have. 
let's say that you have a lot of procedure files and these need to be transferred over into Blue Hill U, which can be quite daunting and quite time consuming. And I'm just gonna point out Blue Hill methods um, are the new phrase for partner files. So I might say methods, I might say our partner procedures. Um, additionally, maybe you find yourself using access database um, that came with partner to actually store historic results and your concern about what is going to happen to that data if we move over to Blue Hill Universal. Perhaps your lab is using GenTest and you're concerned about whether Blue Hill Universal can function just as well as partner in that sense. And then similar to that, maybe your lab is doing some form of spring testing and you're concerned about whether partner can handle these types of methods. You know, or maybe, on the off chance, maybe your lab has only a couple of simple methods and your transition is going to be more straightforward. Um, now that's awesome, but again, we just want to we just want to highlight that we want you to proactively upgrade so you can prevent any major downtime. So you can determine ahead of time what kind of journey you're going to have and um, you know not do it when your lab is already down. So, you know, we're talking about all these challenges, but what is does Blue Hill Universal have to offer as a solution for all of these? So we'll go into solutions. Uh, as I said, let's say you have a lot of procedures. Um, your lab, you know, you might have some partner procedures, uh, three to five that are essentially the same at the core, but certain parameters like test rate or specimen dimensions might be changing from one to one. Um, we have something in Blue Hill Universal called choice inputs. And what this does is that this allows multiple methods to be simplified by allowing parameters to um, be in a pre-configured list of options. So let's say you have those same five procedures, it can turn into one method, and then you just have a drop down that allows you to choose, as we see in the picture, ramp seeds, speed, cycle speed, or even your specimen type. And this is something that Rob will show later. On top of that, we have um, when you are ready to quote and you're ready to, you know, start your journey, um, we're going to ask you for your partner procedure files and run them through something we called Migration Advisor Tool. And essentially, what this is is this is an analysis tool that helps Instron to rebuild your procedures into methods, and it spits out a report that we're able to provide to you and your field service engineer so when they are on site. Um, up, updating your system and doing training. So not only do you get the report, but this also helps us to consolidate those multiple procedures and helps us to avoid any potential surprises at installation and training. If you have an access database and you're concerned about what's going to happen to that historic data, uh, we do have a module in Blue Hill Universal called Trend Tracker. And Trend Tracker is essentially our current database solution to store results in a Microsoft SQL or SQL database. And uh, Rob is going to go into this later as well, but this allows you to compare legacy data with new data that you uh, test on your system. As for gen test users, uh, we have an, an additional module called the test profiler module. And this provides the same multiple powerful multi-sequence testing capability as GenTest, but with redesigned, more intuitive visual prompts. And lastly, if you're on a spring test, um, we, as of 2022, Blue Hill Universal is capable of spring method templates. So you're able to maintain spring test functionality uh, via equivalent method solution, all while gaining the benefits of Blue Hill Universal. And that's great, um, all said and done, but really the best way to convince you of this is to show you the workflow. So I'm actually gonna hand it on over to Rob now and he'll be able to go through um, workflow within Blue Hill University. Awesome. Thank you, Ashley. Um, appreciate the introduction. Um, so I'm gonna, uh, my name is Robert Griffith. I'm one of the other product support engineers at Instron. Um, today, I'm gonna share my soft, uh, the software with you. Um, today on the dashboard. So that should be sharing with everyone. There we go. So move those out of the way. Great. Um, 
So yeah, uh, on your screen currently, um, if you're looking at it, you should be able to see a side-by-side -side image of the Blue Hill software that I have displayed here on the dashboard, as well as I just put image of me in front of the frame. Um, in the middle of the screen, or maybe off to the side of the view window, there should be a bar in the middle that allows you to toggle the, so the size of your screen to the left or the right. That allows you to increase one window over the other so you can get a better experience of visualizing the software. Um, so if you want to make sure to optimize that for whatever screen you're on, go ahead and take advantage of that. Again, it's a little bar in the middle. You can slide to the left or the right. Um, but yeah, like Ashley said, for today, I plan on walking through a lot of the stuff that she's covered. So I'm going to open up and run a demonstration test method using uh, choice inputs as well as test profiler. Um, so the first thing I usually like to highlight here is the fact that our Blue Hill Universal software looks pretty different from Partner. Um, like we said, Partner was initially created in 1996. This came out in 2017. So over 20 years of uh, software development between those times. So a much more modern interface um, that we believe is also much more uh, intuitive and user-friendly. Um, so this is what it looks like when you open it for the first time. Um, if you were to want to run a test using an existing test method that you've already built, again, test methods are now what we call part, uh, procedures. You're just gonna come into here and either tap on the test tab, or you can click if you're using a mouse and keyboard um, as well. And then your pre-existing test methods that you've already created are going to be listed here in this kind of upper panel. Um, so I'm just going to tap on this demo test method that I have created for everyone today. And it's going to open into a pretty standard workspace that you would expect to see when operating Blue Hill Universal. So we have our uh, chart up here at the top. We have our results table, which will populate with results as the tests go on. And then I have a basic operator input area over here on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, like Ashley had mentioned beforehand, I've, uh, choice inputs are a helpful tool to help streamline a couple of different test methods into one, um, specifically if you're testing at this, a lot of the same material types at the same speed, always looking for the same calculations, but maybe just the dimensions change. Um, you have the ability to preload uh, new, various numeric values and text values as choice inputs that correspond to, in this case, what I have is uh, different specimen sizes with different gauge lengths. So I've arbitrarily created a specimen type option where you have 25, 50, and 75 millimeter gauge lengths. So I'm gonna go ahead and click 25. At that point, if you've noticed the link, the length box right here at the bottom does gray out at 200 millimeters. So the 200 millimeter length, three millimeter thickness, 10 millimeter width, those are all predetermined that I've plugged into the software that correspond to my specimen with a 25 millimeter gauge length. If I were to change that to 50 millimeters, I've just kind of arbitrarily changed the length of this specimen type to be 50 millimeters longer for a total of 250. And if I go to 75, I've added another 50 and changed the length to 300. Um, so that just kind of illustrates the power, the power and ease of choice inputs so that as an operator is going through the test, they can just select a couple of options from the drop-down menu, click start on the test, and then they're going to be good to go from there. Um, I'm going to get into kind of the test itself and what the different steps of it look like before I talk about these ramp speeds and these cycle speeds. So within Blue Hill Universal, anytime you configure a test method and configure various parameters, uh, calculations you want to record, results that you want to add to your results table, all of this is going to be done under what we call our method tab. And it's going to be done in the various sections um, where you can talk about various inputs that apply to your sample, or inputs that apply to your specimen. But for today, I'm gonna to focus on um, the test control tab, which is where for test profiler methods, we have an option for creating these multi-step tests um, that allow you to do ramps. So whole, ramping to a specific force, ramping it to a specific displacement or a specific strain value. Um, we can do hold steps, which is what the second step I have here. Um, this can hold either a, cer a certain force value, hold a strain value, hold a displacement value. So you can 
analyze a specimen um, as it's being held at a specific parameter. And then the next most common one is going to be uh, some basic cycle testing. So if you want to take a specimen to an elevated force and then retract it back down, uh, you can do this basic waveform profile uh, with Test Profiler. And that's kind of what I have set up here. So this first step is I've called just ramp to 250 Newtons. All this is going to do is run the crosshead at what I've uh, at a ramp speed that I've that I'll determine back with my input to 250 Newtons. So it's going to take the specimen to 250 Newtons. At that point, it's going to then hold the specimen for 15 seconds. So it's going to hold that displacement value that it took to get to 250. It's going to hold it there for 15 seconds. Afterward, I'm going to cycle three times from 250 Newtons up to 700. So 250, 700, back down again. And we're going to do that three times. And then this last one is just something, a step I've created called ramp to break that's just going to run the crosshead until the specimen breaks. So you can get a idea of break force after a hold and a cycle. Um, test profiler is really helpful to analyze how a material behaves if you put it under different types of stresses and different types of use cases or environments. Um, so yeah, that's the basic setup of this method that I have here. So anytime I do a ramp, I have that speed being dictated by an input I call ramp speed. And then cycle, the speed at which it cycles those tests, I have that also dictated by an input here. So if I go back to the test tab, that's what we first see here is this ramp speed. So I have a drop down menu option that I've pre programmed with arbitrarily 25, 50, 100 millimeters a minute. For this ramp speed, I'm going to say it's going to be 100. So anytime it does a straight ramp, it'll be at a speed of 100 millimeters. And then cycle speed, I have it a little bit slower. And I'm going to set this one at 10. So when it goes into those cycles, it's going to cycle them at a lower speed. Um, these like concepts of changing speeds for different types of steps um, can also just be applied to regular methods that don't use test profiler. Say you're just using a, you're doing a basic tension test like ASTM E8, just pulling it to break. You can still have the test speed dictated by a choice input. I'm just kind of highlighting it all bundled together as one. So I have a specimen loaded here into the grips. I have my speed set and my gauge length set, and I'm just going to click start here. And one thing I want to note is up here in the upper right hand corner of the software, you're going to see uh, what we call our active zone. Um, the active zone is just a live display that highlights which step of the process that you're in when running a test profiler test. So something I find very useful, so I know if I'm in method development and I need to troubleshoot what step I'm at and troubleshoot the test method, that's very helpful. So right now it's showing you that we are in that cycle step of going to 700 Newtons. We're going to do it three times. And it shows you both the loading and the unloading phases of this step. So we can see I'm going at, this is a rate of 10 millimeters a minute. I'm slowly loading to 700 Newtons, backing off to 250, and then going back up to 700. It's going to loop this three times and then run to break. Again, kind of the benefit of using this multi-step analysis is you can see as the test is going on, as I keep going to 700 Newtons and stressing the material, it's strain displaces or the strain keeps increasing each step. So something you, that you can always learn about the material. It's very helpful with test profiler. At this point, we're moving at a faster speed, which is what I dictated with the ramp speed input. And we're going to go until break. Um, and you're going to get, yeah, as you see, it's going to have the live population of the force versus strain curve is what I have here today. And then it's going to populate my results in this results table below. Um, in this results table, it's configurable to include whatever you like, whatever you need, whatever you need to report out to either internal customers, external customers, regulatory agencies, customizable for what your needs are. Um, but I have a couple of things that I've plugged in here. So I have first my specimen type, which is directly dictated by this drop down menu. So for instance, if I were to change that to 25, you can see it changes there. I'm going to go back to 25. The cycle speed as well is something I recorded with this specific specimen. And then a couple other generic results like maximum force, force at yield. I have a break force included, as well as um, max strain and a modulus calculation. So those are just some of the options you have available to you that I wanted to highlight. 
Um, and yeah, so I'm going to run a second test really quick. And one thing that I'm going to do when running a second test is change a couple of the inputs so you can see just exactly how it affects the test. So for this one, we are going to load my specimen. Great. And then I'm going to change the, yeah, I'll change the, the gauge length to 50 like I had in this first one. And then also I'm going to up the cycle speed as well. So we'll move through that cycle step much faster. Um, the last thing I'm going to do is, yeah, I'm just going to adjust this graph really quick. So here, we'll, we'll, we'll run the test first. So first thing it's going to see is the graph is going to always, I have it set up to always display just the, the specimen that's being run at that given time. Um, but you can display multiple specimens overlapped with each other on the graph as the uh, test is being conducted. Very easy to change within the properties of the graph. So we can see here we're going through our cycle steps now um, about five times faster than we did the first time. And then I'm going to just quickly change the properties of this graph so that there are now two curves on it. And you can see it's adding these cycle curves um, underneath the, uh, the existing specimens. So you can get an idea of what it looks like as it's being tested. So we can see the second specimen has slightly higher strain uh, or displacement percentage. And we're going to ramp to our third cycle of 700 Newtons right now. And then it's going to unload one more time. And then we're going to see it ramp until it breaks. So I'm just going to go back to the full scale. And you can start to see this specimen lined up against uh, the first one that we tested. And you can see how they compare specimen to specimen. Yep. So this one displaces much more than the first one did, but you guys get the, you guys get the gist of it. Um, and then, yeah, all these results are going to pop populate down here in the results table. Again, it keeps track of my different uh, gauge length input that I put in, my cycle speed input that I put in, um, as well as all of those calculated results I told it to take. Um, but yeah, so that is kind of the basic overview of what it looks like to utilize choice inputs as well as, well as test profiler within Blue Hill Universal. Um, I'm gonna leave this up in the background. So if there are any questions about Blue Hill Universal that arise during the Q&A portion, I can come back to this. Um, so feel free to ask any kind of generic questions about the software, I'm available to answer those as well. Um, but yeah, the next thing I wanna show you is going to be our trend tracker module. So I'm actually gonna shift over to a different computer. So I'm gonna move this. Gotcha. There we go. And then I will share my screen. Great. So yeah, now you should be able to see my uh, screen right here on the right hand side. This is our application that houses Trend Tracker. It's called Blue Hill Central. Um, and like Ashley had mentioned before, Trend Tracker is our current database solution that is a helpful tool to help replace the access database that you might be used to using with your partner software currently. Um, it's Trend Tracker is our module that allows a connection to a Microsoft SQL database. Um, and then built into Blue Hill Central is a querying tool to help you query that database of historic results to pull up certain chunks of data that you'd be interested in analyzing um, and compare across, if you have multiple systems, compare across system A to system B. If you have multiple parts you wanna compare across or uh, maybe material types, material codes, you can uh, analyze across those as well. So I'm gonna quickly open the trend tracker menu. Um, I'm gonna keep this demonstration relatively high level for the sake of the webinar today, but if you want to dive deeper into this specifically or something in Blue Hill Universal specifically as well, um, we're gonna post a link to 
um, are Ashley and I's Calendly. It's just a tool that allows you to sign up for events or sign up for one-on-ones with us. They're usually about 30 minutes um, and you can sign up with us one-on-one to go over specifically your case uh, that you have and the specific systems you have within your lab and the specific procedures. And so we can get a better understanding of which kind of bucket you may fall into in terms of how, what is your progression to Blue Hill Universal look like. And we can start to be able to help you more on a one-on-one uh, case-by-case basis um, in a more accurate manner. Um, but yeah, so for the sake of today, I'm just going to run a search that I've already, or a query that I've already saved and pre-built. Um, I just have it called our weekly testing report. So the idea behind this is whoever the lab manager is will sit down at their laptop at their desk, or maybe they're working from home that day, they can log in, run the report that they want to search for and see all the testing that was done over the last week. Um, so what I have set up here is a collection of 150 specimens that are tested across three different global locations. So one, in, uh, one location is in Jakarta, one is in Phoenix, and one is in Mexico City. Again, this is that idea that I talked about earlier where you can, uh, whatever inputs you put into the software, so if you have, you want to record location of where the data is taken from, if you want to record operator and who ran the tests, um, part number, maybe a material code, um, a batch number or a lot number, all of those pieces of information can be put into the SQL database and then can be used to query that database to find uh, a specific subset of data that you're looking to analyze. So in this case, I have it being filtered by locations just to get a, a feel of, all right, how is, what is what's happening at each site? And so I've also added uh, just a basic uh, calculation here for ultimate tensile strength. That's one of the results that is in this database. And data at a high level and then kind of drill down into potential errors or concerning trends that you might find within your testing data or just helps you confirm that, hey, my testing is the same as it was six months ago. That's great. Um, one thing I like to highlight here is with this basic statistics of Trend Tracker, you can look at various mean and standard deviation values for certain parameters. So right now I see right here for ultimate tensile strength. If I look at my Phoenix, Arizona site, I can see my standard deviation seems pretty high at 22. So if I want to uncollapse Phoenix, what I can do is now sort by ultimate potential strength. So you can sort high to low like you do in Excel, like a column in Excel. And if I do that, I can find that, all right, off the jump, I see probably what's causing my standard deviation to be inaccurate. It's this one test that was performed that came out with an ultimate potential strength of 17, most likely due to the fact that thickness was also uh, 336 than what it probably should have been at 3.36. So you know, I know that ultimate tensile strength is tied to the dimensions of your specimen. So the error probably comes from the fact that, all right, this thickness value is typed in incorrectly. And then that's resulted in this, this error. So this is more of a one-off case, one of, more of an outlier, nothing that to me as maybe a quality manager, I'm gonna be concerned by if I see. Um, so yeah, something that at a high level you can look at and drill into. So I also notice here, my thickness standard deviation is really high, again, due to that one 336 value. Um, another element, if you, want, if you don't wanna look at this kind of table view of your data, you can look at it in a chart format. So this is a chart I've created for ultimate tensile strength. And it shows your batches of specimens uh, tested across the different sites. Again, this could be, instead of organizing by site, could be code, could be system. And I can see here that there's a decent amount of variation in terms of the value that I get based on location. So that maybe is something that is concerning to me that I, as a, as a quality manager, I wanna make sure across all my labs, the material we're making is consistent. Um, and then I also can see here, it points out uh, a lot, or two outliers actually. So we have this first one over here, which we had found at the Phoenix site. And then we have the second outlier over here, which is also very low. So if I go back to the chart, if I look at the Mexico City location and have it sorted high low, I can see, all right, here's another example where the ultimate tensile strength is off by a factor of 10. Looks like thickness and width are okay. Nothing really changed there. So maybe this was just a test gone wrong. Maybe the system was stopped early. Um, something maybe, yeah, we're not sure exactly what happened. So if I wanted to, I could contact Robert at the Mexico City location and then start to investigate maybe what happened specifically here. Or if it's just one outlier, I can disregard it and move on. Um, 
But yeah, so with the charts, it's also helpful, I think, that you can include um, different lines for some like mean values. So you can get a sense of what's deviating from the mean versus not. You can add upper and lower control limits as well um, to this, so uh, to your chart, as well as maybe some standard deviation lines um, as well. So I'm just gonna, I'll toggle those off. Um, but yeah, some basic statistical analysis built into Trend Tracker, which is really helpful to at a high level understand how your data is performed over time. And in the case of coming from partner, uh, we have the ability to import your results from your access database into Trend Tracker so that you can continue to have that historic backlog as well as the new data that you're going to be testing on our new software. Um, but yeah, so that's all I have today from a demonstration perspective with Blue Hill Universal or Trend Tracker at this time. Um, I'm just going to mention again one more time that uh, the Calendly link that I believe Nick is going to post into the chat is available for you to utilize to access or to sign up for a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Ashley and myself directly. I can also stop sharing my screen. Um, if you have any questions about what your specific lab looks like upgrading from partner, happy to address those with you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and then we can also take that time to discuss getting your partner procedure files, running them through our migration advisor tool um, to get you that report out to eliminate any surprises or reduce, hopefully reduce the time it takes. Because we recognize, like we said, that this upgrading from partner to Blue Hill Universal can be a time consuming process. Um, and we'd want to just be straightforward with, that, with you in that regard so that you can prepare for it and plan for it rather than having to respond in an emergency situation if your software goes down or if your computer crashes. Um, so with that, that's all I have from a, a demonstration purpose today. Um, I'm going to open up the uh, Q&A box to see if we have any questions in the chat. Um, it doesn't look like we had any questions uh, as always walking through this demonstration. Um, so that's, that's great to see. Um, we did have a couple of questions that uh, were asked as part of the registration process. You could have submitted questions to us so I can work through those. And as I'm working through those, if you, any more questions come to mind, feel free to throw them in the Q&A box and I'll make sure to address them. Um, so one of the first, the first two questions are kind of tied hand in hand together. Um, the first one that we got was, how do I know uh, if the system I currently own is eligible to be upgraded? Um, excellent question. Like we said, Partner's been out there for over 20 years. Um, lots of different systems uh, run Partner, and so there's a lot of different things to consider. So the, what is very helpful for that is that migration advisor tool, which will give us your partner procedures and give us information about the hardware configuration you have. Um, yeah, so give us information about the hardware configuration you have, and if there's any maybe upgrades that need to be made to that, um, or if you're eligible for standard Blue Hill, or if there's maybe some slight tweak that we need to make to it in order for it to work for your system. Um, like I said, goes in hand in hand with the questions is what if my system can't be upgraded? Uh, we have the ability to retrofit systems in the field on some instances. Again, we're going to have to look at you on a case-by-case -case basis, depending on how old your frame is, um, the age of the electronics running the frame, the age of the hydraulic pump running the frame, if you're running a hydraulic frame. So lots of things to consider there, but something we can work on one-on-one -on -one with you um, as well. Um, I see we have a couple of more questions that popped into the Q&A. So this first one I'm going to answer. So the question is basically, what is the cost of the system? So I'm going to assume this means cost of upgrading your software to Blue Hill Universal. Um, since it is a, a pretty significant jump um, from partner to universal and requires time with our field service engineers on site to help with that training and that transition. Um, usually in North America, this is the pricing that I have access to. In North America, you're looking at anywhere from fifteen to twenty thousand um, dollars to upgrade a system to Blue Hill Universal. Um, we recognize that that is a hefty financial investment and a hefty capital expense that you would have to uh, most likely plan for. So again, kind of what we wanted to get that message out to you is that this can be a costly, time-consuming process. So it's better to plan for it rather than have to respond to it retroactively. Um, hopefully that answered your question. Uh, the second question we had is, can Blue Hill Universal directly import the partner.prc uh, files? Um, PRC files being those procedure files. Um, no, they can't. 
Uh, all procedure files have to be recreated from scratch within Blue Hill Universal. And that's where that migration tool comes into play again. So it'll look at your procedure files and give us any sort of, it'll raise any sort of red flags that we need to be aware of with specific procedure files and help guide us in that recreation process. Um, so that's a really critical element of any sort of partner upgrade is taking a look at the testing you're currently doing and understanding exactly how to rebuild those test methods. Again, if you're a gen test user or you're doing spring testing, often that requires a test profiler module, which I previously discussed. Um, but once we have your files and we run them through our migration advisor tool, we're able to get that report out that gets shared with you, the customer, as well as the field service engineer that would be going on site to conduct the training and help with that method conversion um, and any other people inside Instron that might be helping convert those methods as well or recreate those methods, I should say, not convert. And then the uh, next question is, does the system support English units such as inches, pounds, and, uh, and pounds of force? Uh, yes, it does. It uh, supports both um, for all unit families and categories. I just have it set up currently for their standard SI newtons. But if you wanted to, in, mil in millimeters, if you wanted to convert it to inches or pounds force, that's also very easy. It's just a matter of changing the specific units for an individual calculation. Um, and I can actually show what that looks like really quick. So I will share my screen here. Great. So yeah, I should be able to see the Blue Hill Universal screen again. So if I go into the method tab, and if I want to look at, oops, let me move my camera back. If I want to go into the method tab of the software, and let's say change uh, my force from Newtons to pounds force. It's very easy. So I can look at my calculations and I can click on the maximum force one here. Um, excuse me, so I'm actually gonna look at my results, not my, not my calculations. So I look at my results and I go to force. Um, right here, you have the option of changing it to a whole bunch of different units or measurements of force. So pound force is an option here that you can report out. You can also change it on the properties of the graph. So on the Y data, instead of Newtons, if I want pounds force, oh, that's kilonewtons, pounds force, I can change it there and we have pounds force. And then same thing here for our length, any sort of dimensions, if I wanna change it to like centimeters, inches, um, you have those options for you available here as well. So very easy to switch between them. Um, and if you want only one subset of them, you can adjust which units are available to you in this category. So right now we have the SI metric and US customary. So if you wanted to just use pounds and inches, I can keep it to just the US customary inches or US customary measurements here. Cool. Gotcha, so yeah. Um, it looks like those are all of the questions that we had in the chat. Um, I'll give it, couple more minutes to or a couple more seconds to if anyone has any last minute questions they want to ask feel free to throw them in there and I'll address them um, but if not that's all I really have for you guys today uh, I'll just one more reminder one more plug to in the chat box of the zoom meeting down at the bottom if you click on that you'll be able to find the link to our calendarly that Ashley and I will be able that you can sign up for one-on-ones with Ashley and I um, and we'll be able to walk through specifically what it looks like for your lab to, uh, to transition from partner to Blue Hill Universal. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm all set. Uh, there's nothing else that I have to share with you today. Um, so I'll pass it back to Nick uh, to wrap things up for us. All right, thanks, Robert. Uh, before we wrap things up, I just have a few quick notes. Uh, if we do get any you know, last minute questions here while I'm wrapping up, uh, I'll be sure to get those over to Robert and Ashley and uh, we'll address those by email. And then just a reminder that we do have um, a, a recording of this that I'll be sharing by email uh, probably either later today or tomorrow. Uh, and the last thing I want to mention is about a webinar we have coming up next week. It's on the November 16th. Our biomedical market manager and our automation specialists will be here to talk about the growing demands in the biomedical industry. Now testing labs are turning to automation to solve new challenges. Um, so these two will discuss how automation can optimize testing throughput, and you also have a chance to see a live demonstration of a couple automation systems, including the Cobot and XY stage. So I'm going to drop a link into chat uh, as well for, for our webinar page where you can uh, find a list of all of our upcoming webinars. Um, 
And then with that said, I just want to say thanks again to uh, Ashley and Robert for presenting today. Uh, and thanks to all of you for attending. Uh, we really appreciate you joining us and I uh, hope to see you again next time. Enjoy the rest of your day.